Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for September 2nd, 2022 from the Ashland Hawk Watch. Today was warm with light and variable winds and the sky started out completely blue, but we did have a high layer of clouds move in throughout the afternoon, so we had some clouds to help us spot the high birds. I spent a little bit of time in the morning looking at songbirds. Here we have a great crested flycatcher. And here's a Baltimore Oriole. I like this shot of a turkey vulture that has some swallows in the background. Here's the top side of a juvenile red-shouldered hawk, and we can see the translucent crescents near the wingtips that are a good field mark for adult and juvenile red-shouldered hawks. Here we have a bald eagle, and we see it has a dark head and a dark underside to the body and the wings have a lot of white in them but we see a even trailing edge to the wing with some light tips to the inner primary so this is a juvenile bald eagle but i would say that this one has more white underneath than is uh, typical to see on the average juvenile so certainly within the range of variation but just an interesting note um, most juveniles just have more white in the wing pit area and less throughout the rest of the wing here we have a downy woodpecker flying by, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on with the tail here, but it looks like some sort of damage. Here we have the underside of a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. So we see that typical beautio shape, although the tail is a bit longer than we might see on like the typical red tail, so that's one thing you can look for. Um, the wingtips, we see those translucent crescents. See it on both wings here. And we notice that the wingtip is made up of five feathers. One, two, three, four, five. And again on this wing, one, two, three, four, five. So that gives the wingtip more of a squared off look or um, somewhat rounded. I like to call it squared off, but it's not that more pointed wingtip of broad winged hawks, which only have four feathers making up the wingtip. Um, I should say that red tailed hawks also have five feathers that make up the wingtip, but I. I typically think of red-shouldered hawks as having a more squared off looking wingtip. Red tails look more rounded, broad wings look more pointed. If we look at the underside of the body, we see that this doesn't really have a belly band like the red tails have where it's just this area that has this uh, streaking and then it's more bare on the upper breast. On the red-shouldered here we see it's kind of an even streaking from the upper breast all the way down. And we see that there are no patagial bars, remember on red tails both juveniles and adults, we see those dark patagial bars in the shoulder areas here. So red, uh, red shoulders and broad wings do not have patagial bars. Here we have a juvenile Cooper's hawk. So we see the long tail, typical of the occipiter genus. And the one thing that um, Cooper's hawks often have is this kind of hooded appearance where you see this, um, it's like the head is one color and then there's a sudden cutoff. It seems that Cooper's hawks show that a little bit more than um, sharp shinned hawks. It's just kind of uh, something you start to get a feel, uh, a feel for when you're seeing so many of them. But of course, whenever we're identifying exhibitors, we're often um, relying on several field marks. It's uh, a little bit dangerous just to use one field mark to tell between Cooper's hawks and sharp shinned hawks. Here we have another juvenile bald eagle. And I would say this is a more typical one. So again, dark head and dark breast and belly but we see that white in the wing pit area, um, but we don't see all that extra white that the other bird we took a look at had. So this is what I think of when I think of a typical juvenile bald eagle plumage. Here we have an adult red-tailed hawk staring us down. And of course, those classic red-tailed hawk field marks, we have the patagial bars, we have the belly band, and this is an adult, so it has a dark trailing edge to the wing and a red tail. Well, if the only way that you know to identify exhibitors is by looking at the tip of the tail, you're probably out of luck on this bird. I think it was probably a sharp-shinned hawk, just from the way it was flying, it seemed pretty small. But um, yeah, it's uh, quite messed up with the tail. I guess it's just molting in, growing new feathers, but um, quite a mess of a bird. Let's take a look at the two birds in this photo. So the top bird is a turkey vulture and we see that nice dihedral and we can even see the red head on it. The bottom bird is a juvenile red-tailed hawk that's diving down. So it's kind of got that classic beautio shape. A lot of times on red tail you see these kind of whitish 
color patches on the back. Um, another thing that you'll see on juvenile red tails is that this area, which I guess are probably the upper tail coverts, um, they're kind of the feathers that come and extend on top of the base of the tail. These are often whitish and sometimes people see that and they confuse it with the white patch on the northern harrier. So just be aware that juvenile red tails do show some white there on the top of, of the base of the tail. And um, just um, from a distance, some people make that mistake. So be aware of that field mark. But we see the kind of brownish tail with slight banding on it. Just um, typical of the red tails we're seeing this time of year. We're seeing a lot of them um, just kind of hanging around and chasing each other and diving around and being playful and uh, not a whole lot of them migrating yet. Um, we really get the peak of the red tail migration later on in the season, end of October, beginning of November. Here we have an adult bald eagle gliding high overhead and it was a bit slow in the morning um, for raptors in general, but in the afternoon it did pick up a little bit and the cloud cover helped us and we had um, you know, small numbers of ospreys and bald eagles that were high altitude like this, just gliding overhead. Here's a photo that I really like. So we have three things in this photo. So let's try to identify them. Let's start with the birds. So the raptor here is an American kestrel. Up here in the top left, we have a ruby throated hummingbird. And in the top right, we have the dreaded spotted lantern fly. And here's another look with the ruby-throated hummingbird down here in the bottom left and the kestrel at the top right. And this is a male kestrel and it actually has an alternate tail pattern. So on most male kestrels, the outer tail feathers are banded and then the rest of them are just orange and then this, um, this black, I guess, subterminal band and then the white tip. But on this one, we can see that it has another white band here and another black band on almost uh, all of the tail feathers. It looks like the central tail feathers are the only ones that don't have that. So um, this is just um, a somewhat uncommon alternate tail pattern. And if you look in some of the field guides, they give examples of other um, alternative tail patterns you might see. And this is one of the more common ones. So um, not something we see all the time, I've, but I've seen a handful of birds that look like this over the years. So it's just something that makes it fun that, um, when you're able to, to spot something that's a little unusual on a bird. And it helps you, um, if you see another male kestrel a little bit later that has a normal tail, we know, okay, that one's a different individual than the one we just counted. So it's um, just a way to help us make sure we're not double counting birds. And here we have a female American kestrel. And so we can see more of the vertical streaking on the breast and um, kind of a brownish tail that's banded. Although you have to be careful when um, when kestrels have their tails folded like this because males, when they completely close their tail, you don't see any of the orange. You just see the the band, the uh, the outer tail feathers which have bands on them. So have to be a little bit careful. But this is a female. Here is one of two northern harriers that we had today, and you can just get a tiny peek at that rump. But again, um, different raptors can show white in this area. Sometimes Cooper's hawks fluff out their undertail coverts. Sometimes red tails have some white in that area. So um, we're not just going off of the white rump, also just the overall shape, the way it's bowing its wings a little bit. And um, I think it was flapping when we saw it and they, just have, they have this really loose kind of lanky flap. Here's a nice surprise of a bird that we don't get to see too often, especially um, sitting out in the open like this. This is a yellow-billed cuckoo. And if we take a look at the eBird checklist, 49 species today, so not too bad. Really nice day to be out birding. And again, I'll put a link and you can check it out if you wanna see all of the photos from the day. Taking a look at the report on hawk count, today for migrant raptors, we had five osprey, five bald eagles, two northern harriers, one sharp-shinned hawk, two cooper's hawks, one red-tailed hawk, six American kestrels for a total of 22 migrant raptors today. And we had no broad wings today. I guess that was another um, point of note. Um, yesterday we only had a couple, but you'd expect this time of year to see at least one, but maybe they were just migrating really high today and they can be pretty hard to spot. So no big deal. Taking a quick look at a couple other sites, Hawk Ridge in Minnesota had 80 bald eagles today and 46 sharpies. So 
decent numbers. And if we take a look at Rockfish Gap down in Virginia, which I got to visit last August, which was pretty cool, uh, they had 32 broadwing hawks today. So, you know, different hawk watches here and there are starting to get broadwing numbers. A couple dozen here, a couple dozen there. Um, but just a taste of what's to come over the next few weeks. And if we take a look at the weather map for tomorrow morning, we see this high pressure system is moving off out of New England and we see that there's another cold front that's going to be heading down our way over the next few days and also some rain off to the south. And if we look at the forecast for Delaware, tomorrow will be mostly cloudy early and then partly cloudy, high in the upper 80s, winds light and variable, so wouldn't expect too much migration just early in the season with not very favorable conditions. For Sunday we're looking at considerable cloudiness with a stray shower or thunderstorm possible high near 90 winds south southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour so again pretty unfavorable conditions and monday considerable cloudiness with occasional rain showers high in the low 80s winds south at 5 to 10 miles per hour chance of rain 40 percent so again not looking like a great day pretty uncomfortable hot muggy rain so uh Hopefully after that the weather clears up and we'll start to get some better numbers, but the next few days aren't looking super spectacular. Alright, that's it for today, and even though the next few days aren't looking too great, maybe you'll get a chance to get outside and see some birds, even if they're not hawks. Definitely uh, some warblers starting to migrate, and it's just going to get better and better over the next few weeks, so hope to see you out in the field. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.